We've established the fact that doctrine is something that could be found almost everywhere, beginning from your household to a business organization, to a city, a community, down to a country. And to any organization, you must find a doctrine. So a doctrine are those documents or anything that it could be seen as a policy that has been there to guide you. And if you are part of any organization, you must believe and be led by the country of that organization. So you cannot be in that organization and you disobey the doctrine, the doctrine of that organization. And I say there are people that could be found in the system and disobeying the doctrine of that system. I say such people are dangerous. Amen. Do you know why? But we must find people like that. I give an example. Judas Iscariot was among the apostles and he knew about the doctrine. He was brought, was put up by Christ. So Jesus was the foundation of the doctrine. And all along in his life, if he was affected by the doctrine, it would be difficult for him to do what he did. Though what he did was okay for the scripture to be fulfilled. But a man that is not affected by the doctrine, live by the doctrine, abide by the doctrine, or not align the doctrine to become flesh. The expression of the doctrine in his or her life, that person will, be, will stand against that organization. I, I want to get that here. Because the person will pretend as if he believes what other people believe. But in the real sense of it, he does not believe it. So, the person could be seen as a hypocrite. The person could be seen as a pretender. So, such people are dangerous. They will kill. They will scatter. And I show us the ministry of, of, of Demas last week. So, we will return back to that ministry. We will talk about it in detail. Praise the Lord of So, Demas was one among the people that was aware of the doctrine. But he did not give himself to the doctrine. And so he stood against the doctrine and he moved away. The Bible says he fell away for the days of the war. Balaam, the same thing. Nicholas, so we could continue and name them and name them. So we can bring it to our time. So the scripture is given unto us to guide us. It's a template that leads you to eternal life. A template that proves you are a believer, you are a Christian. Nothing more than that. We have people that bring a different policy. Before you become a member of a church, you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to do that. No. This is a body of Christ. And this is why we must know what is obtainable and what is required of you and I. The apostolic doctrine, it is not a doctrine for the apostle. Praise God. It is not a doctrine mainly for the apostle. No. Rather, it was a doctrine for every believer every follower of Christ but it was called the apostle doctrine and I will give I will tell you why it was called the apostle doctrine praise God and I show you that Satan also has a doctrine Satan has a doctrine so it was proven so the apostle has their own doctrine amen so because it was called the apostle doctrine, it was not just meant for the apostle. It doesn't mean that if, if you are an apostle, it becomes your doctrine. No. It was a doctrine for the body of Christ. It affects you as an apostle, affects you as a prophet, 
affect you as a teacher, affect you as a pastor, affect you as an evangelist, affect you as a follower, affect you as sons and daughters of the Most High God. The reason why it was called the Apostle, the Apostle Doctrine, because of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20. Amen. We are, we are told about the foundation of the church. It was built on the prophets and the apostles. It was built. Where Christ became the chief cornerstone. I told us that was the basis of what we are discussing. That was the beginning, the foundation of the doctrine. It was in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20, chapter 20. Am I right now? Amen. So they are built. Upon the foundation, so the apostle has a foundation which is the doctrine, and the prophet has their foundation which is the, their own doctrine too. Jesus becoming chief cornerstone, removing the cornerstone out of it, the, the two will collapse. I, I want to get that. So the prophets and the apostles we are fitly fitted, connected to Christ Himself. So without Christ, none of the doctrine. None of the policy, none of the whatever that will stand. So this was what the Bible said that Jesus become a chief cornerstone. Do you know a chief cornerstone? Amen. That in the building there, that's what they call it, the corner piece. Praise the Lord. In another word, that is what they call angle ninety. I want to get that here. If you want to be now, angle ninety is just this angle here. You have this angle here. Amen. Now, any good builder that wants to start building, it always starts from angle 90. We have engineer here, am I right? Is that true? Praise God. Now, from angle 90, you take the floor, you connect it to angle 90. Now, locally now, you will see that sometimes they will put a wall from this end to that end before they begin to lay block. Am I right? In order for it to be plumbed. So Christ became like the angle 90, connecting this side and this whatever that was built. The apostles were like a partition. The prophet were like a partition. Now, without them connecting to the chief cornerstone, which is the angle 90, they will not stand. So every building you build, and without this angle 90, on this part, there is no way to be connected. In short, they can't stand. I want to get that here. Now, that was a clear picture. So Jesus becoming the cornerstone. The prophet and the apostle, what does that mean? It means that the Old Testament is still important. There are doctrines that were from the Old Testament that was brought. The apostles were not of the Old Testament. The prophet was of the Old Testament. Listen to this. There are three jurisprudence that the doctrine was predicated on in the old altar. I want to get that here. In the old altar. And what are they? We have the judges, we have the king, and we have the prophets. Now the judges, the king in the old altar, and we have the prophets. The prophets were symbols of God, servants, symbol of God, man peace. So God passed through the prophets to deliver, to deliver, to deliver. To bring out the, the message and whatever I so saw. When you look at it, the area we have the judges, we have the king, and we have the prophets. President of our Lord Church. So it was built on the prophets and the apostles. Now, in the new covenant system, now the foundation was built on the apostles. So both the old and the new are important. Jesus is the foundation of all of them. So they continue to be. So for whatever, whatever commandment that was received was received from God. In the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 18, that will say, This 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 doctrine cannot be altered. This is how important it is. Listen to this. It cannot be, it cannot be altered. You can't change it. You can't subtract. You cannot add. It can't be altered. So you came to meet it. You met it, you continue with it. And if the doctrine is not affecting your life, it's not affecting the system that you ought to affect, you know you are out of it. That's what it means. So 
So we are guided and we are lived by that. So nobody should come and add to it or subtract away from it. It has to be the way it was stated and it was, it was written. Revelation chapter 22 verse 18. Say, and if any man shall take away from the, 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 the words of, the, of this book and of this prophecy, he said his own path shall be taken away. Are we together here? So the words that was written and the words of the prophecy, they are words of God, but they are not words of men. The doctrine and the doctrine that Jesus came to establish, it is not men coming together and begin to go. Put one thing up to get one or two things together. No. Praise God. So Revelation is telling us, whoever that take from the wall of this book and the wall of the prophecy, whoever, whoever, he said his own shall be taken away. Now let me take you to the Old Testament in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4 from verse 2. Moses, this be a part of the doctrine which was the commandment. Ye shall not add unto the war which I command you, neither shall ye diminish. Is somebody getting here? Ye shall not add, ye shall not add unto the war which I command you, neither shall ye diminish out from it. With another word, neither will you remove it. So he's still telling us about the doctrine. It was given to the church to be a blessing to the church, to guide the church, to lead the church, to separate the church from the wall, separate the church from the church of the wall, separate the church of Jesus from all other churches. So it doesn't matter what you see in all other churches, but that is a doctrine that was given to separate, to keep the church holy. And so he said, Yes, shall not add unto the wall. You don't add unto it. Don't add unto it. When I command you, neither shall yet diminish. You don't reduce it. Don't subtract. Present of Lord Jesus. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 8, for the apostle here, I just gave you the one from the Old Testament. Now, for the apostle here, in Galatians chapter 1, they committed their life, committed their resources, committed their all. Amen. And they said, even if an angel came and said something contrary, let that person be opposed. In other words, whatever we have received with the neighbor should not be added, it should not be subtracted. Praise God. That's what it means. The same thing with what Moses was saying in the Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 2. The same thing with what John was saying on the island of Patmos concerning the revelation of Jesus Christ in Revelation chapter 22. Hallelujah. The Lord will give us understanding of His word in the name of Jesus. So quickly this morning, we will go straight ahead and begin to look at the doctrines. What are they? These are things that you are familiar with. These are things you are aware of. But sometimes there are ways that it should be done because they are patterns. The doctrines we are patterns, they we are system. Today we have seen pathway to heaven ministry or pathway to heaven church or assembly and whatever. And when you get into that place that was supposed to lead you to heaven, what you see. Is different thing. Praise the Lord, our Lord talks. I, I want to get that. It is not just enough for us to teach it or for us to know it. If it is not affecting and it's not reflecting in us, it is not enough, sir. It is not enough. Praise the Lord, our Lord talks. It is not something that is being enforced. Nobody enforcing on anyone. That is the beauty of Christianity. A beauty of Christianity. You are not forced. You are not coerced. You are not put under pressure. But it is something that you willingly 
you will be. It comes with sacrifice. It comes with pain. You encounter difficulties. For you to stand out. For you to declare your stand. Because you are doing something different from the common. You are doing something different from the norm. And so it became a challenge. Became a challenge. There were many reasons and factors that those that were together with the apostles they fell away. They did not fall away because Satan wanted them to fall away. That is always a price to pay. Nobody comes to Jesus. At your first instance, you are giving your life to Christ. You must have come so battered. You must have come so dirty. You must have come so rugged. You must have come either you are a, an robber or a prostitute or an, a, 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 an adulterer or a fornicator. Whatever case it may be, there was something that will always leave you. You were not pure before you came to Christ. You were not perfect before you came to Christ. You were not a saint before you came to Christ. Coming to Christ cleanses you all. Wash you. Bring out the beauty in you. It's a praise you from all the things that you used to do that they are ungodly. But while you were doing them, you were enjoying them. And this was sometimes taking some steps. You could be moved. Temptation could come. You could be tempted. Hallelujah. So, you are not a Christian by mouth. No. And this is why you must know what it involves and what it is. Nobody should pamper you. We are not called to be pampered. But we are called for us to know the reality. Can I hear amen to that? Know what the truth is. And live by the truth. Praise the Lord. So we'll go straight and look at some of this doctrine and if time permit us, we will go further to explain them one after the other. One after the other. As time permit us. Praise God. So we have many of these doctrines. And as we are explaining the one about the other, there are some other sub doctrines of other things that might, might come in. Praise the name of the Lord. And I will take communion to discuss about communion today. And in time permit us, I will talk about marriage. I want to give you an example. I'm not, I'm not talking about marriage today. I was reading the newspaper within the week on the 4th, which was last week Sunday, Punch to be precise. And there was a man of God that was interviewed. It was a prophet by calling, according to him. And he married the first wife, married the second wife, married the third wife. And at the end of the interview, they were asking him, if the opportunity is there, will you marry? He said, of course, because he's married to help a woman. Any woman that needs help, I can still marry her. I am telling you this so that you will know. I am not saying somebody tell me or something. It was the interview he and I caught the date on the 4th of February. Punch newspaper. Amen. Amen. He married the first one. And after he married the first one, he has about three four also there about the five or there. And he went ahead. The ministry was going on. And he married a second person. Whether the second person, whether I'm a by a mistress or something. Go and read it for yourself so that I will not tell you something different. Amen. Uh, but the member of the church. And the woman, the first woman that he married, took him to station. Praise God. Took him to station. Listen to this. Whatever that has to do with spirituality cannot be solved anywhere. Either in error or in a, in a perfect, in correct way, it can only be solved by the ways of spirituality. The same spirituality. 
spirituality saw exists. I, I want to get that here. So the reason why did Jesus say that the sins of the spirit, a carnal man cannot do what? Cannot understand. When you carry the, the things of the spirit to any organization, for them to be treated or for it to be handled, they will mess it up. The woman went to station and reported the husband. Why would the husband marry this and marry this and all that? And what he has been doing and all that? When at the end of the day, the police people came and said, Oh, you woman. I like your husband. Your husband is, is, is free to marry as many as want to. That's what that is. Do you understand it now? So the law did not permit it. The law, the talking we're talking about, we are talking about here. If you cannot be found, it could be found just within the church, the system. When you go outside the system, they will misinterpret it. So your husband is allowed to marry as many wives. Then why are you bringing him to police station? We should arrest him, we should put him to jail. This is a family matter. We should go and solve it. Do you understand it now? They, they, they have no explanation. And I went for that. Why did you go for that money? And what did he say? He said, God told him. God told him. He should marry. The woman. Praise God. And why did he marry the woman? The church, the church was shaking. Many people left him. And he said that was when God makes him a millionaire. And he's speaking as a millionaire. After he married his own wife. Because God wants to make him a millionaire. And the people that left him, when they saw millions, they returned back to him. What brings you to church? What takes you to church? What is the motivating factor? That makes you to leave your house. And you say you are going to a place of worship. To worship God. What motivates you? Praise God. So if you don't have an encounter with Jesus and the world. Whatever that motivates you. Can never keep you. Something was motivation. Hallelujah. If you love God, nobody will come and tell you anything that because of what you now say you are leaving church. You don't need a church because you have issue or because you have misunderstanding. You leave a church because God is leading you to be. Or you are leaving a church because of an error. An error that was untreated. I, I want to get that here. That should be the basic. You don't leave because somebody says something or somebody gossip you or somebody say he hates you and you are leaving it means you don't know why you are going to church who told you you must not be hated who, who told you that when you come here you will be free who told you that nobody will envy you who told you praise God your reaction to every issue that comes to you that is what defines who you are Demas was among them. Timothy was there. What Demas saw, Timothy saw it. Luke saw it. Mark saw it. But the reaction of Demas towards the things of God was different from the reaction of Timothy. May you stand for Jesus. Amen. I can't hear that. Amen. amen. I said, May you stand for Jesus. Amen. He alone can defend you. He alone. He alone. He alone. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. The man went further. He married two wives because one wants to become a millionaire. He became a millionaire and was proud of the money he had. And he went further to get a third wife. The third wife was a widow. So God said, go and marry that widow. So that you will help her. Go and marry. And the first one cannot leave again because 
if she did, that she's the one, she'll be the one that will be losing. Because the money, the way, the money is. Praise the Lord. Need her. You are not married, you need her. When you look at the man, you go there, you have you become your wife. And they all have apartment. They're not asking, how do you do it? Where do you sleep? Praise God. That is that when you go down. What if I'm telling you anything about the gates? Gates and the call of God is without repentance. Don't be carried away. With all of this, don't be kind of me. Praise God. So today, if you like, he sleeps here. Tomorrow, he sleeps here. Then tomorrow, he sleeps here. What happened to the women? No, no, no. He has he, he touched them. If they have anything, they should come to him. So they are all in agreement. They are all together.
So they call it a Eucharist fish. They call it Lord's Supper. Now this this is a fish, and this fish was was not you know was not just uh, something that just started when Christ came. No, it has been you know it's a practice, a custom of the Jew before the arrival of Christ. So when Christ was born, for the number of years he spent from year one and thirty three years, he has been observing the feast. He came to establish rich, but he came under the law. So everything that was happening under the law, Jesus Christ was participating. He participated. As we must know what happened before Christ and what, what continued is happening after Christ. The apostolic doctrine now, it was a doctrine it was a teaching of Christ that was continued after Christ. After Christ's ascension. I, I want to get that here. After Christ's after ascension. So we have Apostle Paul that was given with the mandate to teach and to present this doctrine to the church in among the gentile. He was the apostle that was choosing. To go to the Gentiles, that was the assignment. Remember, when he was going to Damascus, I went from Damascus to Jerusalem for to slaughter and to stand against the gospel. The encounter he had on his way to Damascus, the encounter he had at the point, part of the encounter, he went blind. Do you remember, George? He went blind. And he was taken to the house of a man called Judas in Damascus. Now listen to this. While he was there, he was blind. God revealed to him in a vision. And he saw a man called Ananias that was coming to pray for him for an disciples was restored. Now, it was the Spirit of God that spoke and appeared to, to, to Apostle Paul who in that stage. Ananias never knew what was happening with Apostle Paul. And I never knew that Apostle Paul was blind. And I never knew that Apostle Paul was on a journey to go against the children of God. And Ananias was in Damascus. One of the disciples in Damascus. One of the disciples in Damascus. Present of the Lord And they said, Christ appeared to, to Ananias. And they said, Ananias, go to a street called Streets and inquire from the house of Judah. There was a man called Saul that was blind. He saw in a vision where you came and you resolved. No any other person that will do that assignment. If any other body come for that assignment, Apostle Paul will ask, this is what God should be. Why is this person coming? I want to get ahead. here. And so why Apostle Paul was in that house? Ananias went in. Ananias was arguing before. He was saying, No, Jesus, no, this thing cannot be. I knew about this man. His name was Saul. Many people were talking about him in Jerusalem. How he stood against your name. How he stood against your word. How he became a stumbling block. He said, No. Allow him to remain blind. Let him die in that situation. But Jesus said, No. That was my chosen person. My chosen person. You could be chosen of God. Like I used to say. And that is why nobody to be content. I want to get that here. You might be a real the best way one person in the world. But you could be a chosen of God. Amen. Amen. Whatever we do is to keep teaching and to keep preaching and to continue to pray to anybody around us but not to be angry with them with their character he that treated his man let it do take him, let it do you don't exalt and glorify yourself you are the best and another person is not the person you look down today Thinking is nothing. You will 
be so shocked when the glory of God begins to manifest through that person. You will look for where to hide your feelings. In everything you are, in whatever you do, you don't remove away God's factor. And what is in that God's factor? His plan of predestination. What makes him to see the end from the beginning? You can never get there. You can never see the end. And because you cannot see the end from the beginning, you can never see the end of whatever you're interacting with. You will only have a glimpse. And that will humble you. Be careful the way you talk. Be careful the way you react. Be careful the way you deal with people. The level you are, it is just a level. I want you to get that here. It's just, it's just a level. It's just a privilege. Just an opportunity. You are just there. Amen. Amen. You are just there. That you are just there does not mean you have you have you have cut to the cities. No, you can still move further from where you are, and you can still go back from where you are. You Amen. These are things that many of us don't know. We don't know. And if you have the knowledge of this, pride will be far away from you. Pride. Why you are looking forward for more? Why you are looking forward for more? You don't know what God has given us to intimidate others, to challenge others because you have it. Praise the Lord. You could be provoked. Something happens to me within the week. More than a week. You all know we have an account that we don't touch the account. If you know what happened to that account and what the bankers intended to do, when it's about time for us to withdraw the coconuts, apply for check coconuts, to withdraw coconuts. And I look at the, the, the sister that she watched with us. And because of our presence, we help us do this, that open our accounts. Not knowing the account was open in such a way that it appeared to be like a deposit or something that you cannot praise God we just, we just keep depositing, nobody touches we keep depositing, nobody touches Amen, Amen. I came to her, I said sister what is happening, she told me that she has finished her own pastor she cannot do anything again she sent the manager number, I called the manager she declined the call I sent WhatsApp messages. No response. Praise God. I called some of the people I know in another branch. And I relayed the issue with them to them. I said, this is what I'm going to do for going to do. And this is this, this. They say, ah. They help us check. And when they check, they say, ah, please, sir, try to go to the branch. Allow them to provide. I said, what well, they are asking that we provide it. You know, that is this fraudulent aunt in everywhere. And because nobody touched the money for like a year, they might be thinking that they're, they're using it for their soul. It's not even like, it's not even being credited. I, I, I want to get that here. And I saw a deliberate, as while I was there in person, I think it had become like a journey. I went there. The woman I said, I'm looking for a social person. The manager. The security man looked at me, he said, look at it. He now said, yeah, look at look at her. And I went standing by the counter. I said, good morning, madam. I am social person, social person will be chatting. If you decline my call, if you decline his not response, I decided to call by myself. I want to know what is actually going on, what is happening. She said I should hold up. I've written the letter to close the account and whatever. As you see, I did, I did not want to call. Why am I telling you this? I, I became so agitated, provoked, 
when I'm being provoked, you don't have somebody to provoke and place him. He don't come to me. I want scatter. I want to get them close. Nobody will walk here. You know that kind of That kind of will hide. No, no, you will not walk until you get my money. That kind of spirit you don't enter in I was born in and I was controlling myself. You know you're a Christian. You're willing to be a pastor. Now talk to me this. So you have to maintain. Praise God. I was there, I was like, my eye on the red set. The woman said, mind me. Some people get mine. Praise God. She looked at me and I said, okay, I have sent the data to the end of the road. Who are you sending the data to? Tell them I am here. Give me the number, let me call them. Praise God. At the end, she said, some of these things cannot be done. Though. It cannot be done. I was there, woman came, and she was complaining. How? Then we put 10,000 and then she came and said, for Chinese, for Chinese for us. How this amount of money was missing, and just like that. And they were given her explanation. Right in my presence, they were the Chinese. I was like, what kind of Chinese is this? Praise God. Do you know? And while I was there, the Spirit of God said, Leave. Praise God. He said, Leave. The reason why some people, they are not tormented, eh? they will use you, no, they carry it at all. Mesmerize your life. I left. Why are you doing this? There are other ways you can deal with this man. Uh, when I was doing that, you know, there are things you go normal, normally now. It's a normal process. The Bible says, follow all men with what? With peace. Peace. Go with peace. I went with peace. And at this time, not trouble. So I have to go to my office too. Praise God. I return back to my office. I return back to my office. And in my office it was the midnight. I waited until after 12. And I began to call that number. You will not see me. You will not see me. I received a call her seven times. I called, it was ringing. Stop. I called, it was ringing. And I know by this time she should be sleeping. Seven times. And the Lord led me to pray. Praise God. Led me to pray. And after prayer, by following law, I sent her some messages. I said, because you and as men that are involved in this matter, you choose to frustrate us. You shall be frustrated. Spiritually and if you have been doing this to honor, this one cannot be done. And I'm giving you between 9 and 10 a.m. this morning, this thing should be sorted out. I said, I will follow it legally, and I'm following it spiritually. Praise God. The first thing she did when she got to the office was that matter. I was here. After I'm praying, I'm removing that on the river. I was looking for her because I'm going to pray for her. I will pray for her to be where she is. If anything happens to her, but I'm it's going to be our own. It becomes a body. I want to get her here. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. And Jesus came and practiced it. Exodus chapter 12 from verse 26 to 27. 
So there are, there are two fish. We have the Passover fish and the unliving fish. They are two different fish. And these two fish were not observed at the same time. The Passover fish was observed when they were in Egypt. Do you remember? A day before they left Egypt, when the firstborn of, 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 of the Egyptians died, when the angels of destruction visited Egypt, the angel that key visited Egypt, and God instructed them that every household should slaughter a lamb. You remember? Take the pot and put it in your lantern. For I am passing by to this night. So a Passover feast was something that was observed at night. Praise the Lord Jesus. And so it happens. And after the kind of the instructions, what happened? The next day, the people were dying. That was what led for their freedom too. It was a Passover that signifies the deliverance of the children of God. The freedom of the children of God. The judgment in the land of Egypt. Praise the Lord Jesus. And so the living prayer, it is a prayer. It's a fish that we observe. So they observe the seven days. How together here? The two weeks, seven days. Like that. And it is a prayer to eat without it. All of this to put together. They are representing Christ. They are representing. So it was a picture and a symbol of Christ. All of this were happening in the shadow. In the shadow. So when Christ came, Christ became. That lamb, and when John saw it in John chapter 1, verse 29, he said, Behold, the lamb that taketh away the sin of us of the world. That was the lamb that slaughtered in Egypt. So the body of Christ became that lamb. So the lamb that was to be slaughtered for you and I to be redeemed. Now, when the instruction came, it came to Moses. Now, Moses was one man. And Moses was handling a segment. And what's the segment? A particular portion called the Israelites. We were not part of it. We were not in that era where the slaughter man and the spoke the blood. If you are doing that today, it was a big error. So there was a covenant that was established. Moses was raised as a deliverer, as a type of Christ, that Jesus came. Now what's the difference? Jesus came in this time and to present himself as the man that take over the sin of the world. So it is not come for just one segment. He came for the generality of the world population. President of the So it was as a result of what Christ did that paved way for you and I to be crafted in. Can I hear amen? So it was his death. It was his burial. It was his resurrection. That big way for you and I to be crafted in. We will be a called Gentiles. The non Jew will be a called Gentile. Apostle Paul became the apostle to the Gentiles. We will be a non Jew. We will be a non Jew. So Moses did all of that, it was a time. So Moses was almost limited, segmented, a particular portion. But Christ came to the generality. That was why he came. He came to only become the son. He loved the world. Moses did not love the world. I want to get ahead. The love he had is just for this. So Jesus came for the whole world. And as the Lamb. So before all of this happened, he gathered the disciples, which was the church. That was a representation of the church. Both the Jews and not the Jews. Jesus was, was eating that, that communion. I mean, that is, he was part of it. Before he came and gathered them and he presented something different. So what Jesus presented to the disciples was a different feast compared to the one they have been doing. And what makes it different? It was called the Lord's Supper. It was at that point he let them know that this thing you were doing, your forefathers scattered it, that was given to Moses. It represented me and how God came to deliver. And I told you that Egypt was a type of the world. It is not an Egypt like country, it's a type of agent of Satan, it's a type of suffering, type of 
for anything demonic, whatever you know. Type of bondage, type of of, of slavery, and whatever name you call it. Praise the name of Jesus. So Jesus came and he said, "Go and prepare for us." And the man they prepared the prophets, and he began to tell them, "The bread was without it. It was my body. The body that was broken, the body that was laid down, that was the body. That was why it was referred as the bread of life." Praise God. And the Bible said, "He lifted up his hands." He broke it. The breaking of it is the torture you receive. The beating you receive. The, the, the kind of tongues you receive. The heaviness of the cross in heaven. The strife you receive. That was a symbol. He told Moses, not told Moses. He said, this practice should be continued. So when you go to the Jew, they are still practicing it. Different from what Christ presented. Are we together here now? We call it the loss of power. He brought what he gave to them and he said, Take this. He paid the call. And he said, the call of the New Testament, remember, Ephesians 2 20, remember, that it was built on the foundation of the apostles and laws and the prophets. On the apostles and the prophets. Now, he came and laid it down. Hallelujah. He introduces. He introduces. It was a wine. But all of that were simple. Then it was simple. It was a wine. And he said, it represents my blood. At that time, Jesus had done that. At that time, it was not crucified. power. But it was a night before his betrayal. Praise God. It happened in this week, a night before their departure. I, I want to get that here. One among you that we are eating together doing it in the same table has raised his hand against me. So the person that will betray you was exposed. So Jesus was aware of Judas Iscariot and Tizidem. But everything worked together for good. And everybody must go the way it was waiting for him. Praise God. He was aware. He was aware. They began to ask themselves, who could this be that we enjoy the need? Who could this be? Is it me? Am I the one? Are you the one? And they are asking, do that was asking. I don't know. I don't know. But what he wanted to do was to leave. How do they? And he arranged to them. For how much was this so? Because when you see Jesus in the midst of the disciples, you will hardly differentiate. That is the level of simplicity and humility. He was left as a sheep. Before the storm. And the essence of the living bread was a symbol of humility, a life without pride. That is a life of every Christian. That is how we should be. Praise the Lord. Judah said, The one I kiss, you see me with peace. That is the person who. So that they will not go and take Peter. Amen. Amen. Or Matthew. Hallelujah. Amen. And he came as usual. Master, 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 master. It is well with you, master. God bless you, master. He will be smiling on And he kissed. And that was how he took him. Jesus never stopped. Because already he knew where he was going to. Hallelujah. But what was the instruction? He said, Do peace. It was remembrance. But some people said, No, that we are not supposed to do this because what you are doing is the point the Christ has came and he died. And this is what I want to show us. That 
was another small pot that Jesus came it was a body he was it was his body that broke so it has been happening you just keep remembering what he has done but while he was doing this he said do this he remembers the word of me and the one that was given the message instruction which was the apostle the dead in the book of first Corinthians then it was trying to let us know because even after Jesus Christ has left does the church continue in doing it yes after he has left after he has his ascension the church continued and that is why you and I must continue it was a doctrine it was a doctrine praise God it became a doctrine he said do this in remembrance of me and this is why whenever he's been observed you are remembered of what he did you know that the prayer is a symbol it was a symbol President of Lord Let me quickly read that then we close. First Corinthians. Thank you, Jesus. First Corinthians chapter 11. Satan. So it's either these three days. 
Praise God. And if it out of ignorance, and they were taught, they will repent. And if it out of error, they were taught, they will repent. But if Satan is the one using them, eh? they will be prayed for. They will be delivered. They will get what God will repent. But if they are really, really Satan legend, don't expect repentance. I want to get ahead. Yes. When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to ease the lost words. The lost of us. So here we don't call it uh, the feast, the way they call it, you know, in old order. Praise God. The living bread feast or the now it has now become the lost words of supper. For in this day, everyone taken before other his own supper. And one is hungry and another is drunk. Now, do you know what happened? When we come together, what I was called say is whenever they call, some people will be rushing. Some will want to take three, four, five, and some will not even have anything to take. Some of them will bring cup that is different from the small cup that they are using to serve. They want to tap, put, put more, put more, put more. I, I want to get ahead. So they will come, come prepared to eat. That was what is happening. Now. So Apostle Paul heard about it. He said, No. So they knew the importance of the loss of one. But they were approaching it carnally and wrongly. Wrongly. It is not for you to eat to satisfaction. I want to get that. It is a symbol you are demonstrating. It's just a demonstration. The way you demonstrate and you went for a water baptism for immersion for the remission of your sin. Period. Has your sin not been remitted by Christ with what he did? Why must you go to water? Because it was a doctrine. Is someone with here? Why must you confess Jesus and accept him? If Jesus has come and he died because of you, he came because of you, he has paid the crown because of you, why must you do that? Because it was a doctrine. So there were many things that people think that because this is has been done, don't do it. It has been said to them, no. If that is a symbol, it's a sign that you have believed. Oh, so nothing should be skipped. Don't skip anything. If you are skipping it, you are subtracting it and you are adding, which is against the, the ordinance of God. Praise God. He said, What? Have you no house? You don't have house to eat and drink. So he was telling them, You don't get house. Sometimes when they come, they fight you. Eh? Maybe a minister now don't pass. Eh, if you want carry, you want carry three, he said, No, brother, carry one. You could be best. That minister, eh? The way they behave, now me and my now me and my body stops. I want carry two bread. I want carry two bread. He said, I carry one. And the bread with me. And why do you say I carry one? Praise the Lord, Lord Jesus. It will become a. You will be, be, be angry. That's what will happen. There will come some people will eat, some people will not eat, some people will drink, some people will not drink. And you don't know have houses to eat. You can bake it and do it in your house and eat it as many. Or whatever you want to eat, it has become a food. I, I want to get that. And many of you are, you know, you, to drink, drink in your house or despise here the church of God. Why you despise the church of God? Why are you going against it? Why despise the church of God? And shame them that have not. What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? No, I can't praise you in this. He says, sit down and listen. And this is how it's been done. Because they said, God, please go because of my time. My time is, my, my time is off. The next, he said, For I have received of the Lord that which was also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, in, in the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. So Jesus appeared to him. He has an encounter, exactly what Jesus was telling the disciple. That was exactly the experience he had. Praise God. Exactly, so he was bringing and reminding them. He said, This is how you should be done. And when he had given thanks, take it and say, Take it. This is my blood, which is broken for us, for you. This too, you remember the words of me. After the same manner, also, he took the cup. When he had stopped, he drank it, he had stopped it, and saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This too, 
hear. As often as hear do what? In remembrance, as often as often. So in the Old Testament, there is a specific time. But for us here, there was no specific time. Are we together? We can do it every day. We can choose to do it once in a week. We can choose to do it once in a month. But we must not skip it. It must be done. Praise God. That's the difference. For as often as they eat this bread and drink this cup, yet to show the lost of dead. Till he do what? Till he come. Till he come. We are born. Whosoever shall eat of the bread and drink this cup of the Lord, unworthy shall be guilty of what? Of the body. So he's telling them the implication of doing it wrongly. If you are observing, you eat it, you drink it wrongly, this facing is what will happen to you. But let the man examine himself. And so let him eat of the bread and drink of what? Of the cup. For he that eateth and drinketh of what he eateth and drinketh what? Damnation. So that is the danger of it. Not designing what? The lost body. Go ahead. For this cause, many are what? Many are weak. And sickly among you. And many are what? Sleep. Praise God. How to get ahead? So that's the implication that happened. And the reason why you don't approach it anyhow, you, you must come with the mindset, knowing fully what, what he has done. He said, But if we will judge ourselves, should not be us, we judge. The next verse. But when we are judged, we are testing of what? Of the law. That we should not be condemned with the word. The next verse. Therefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tithe. One was, this is the, that I this one sometimes, anytime we are doing it, we are sure that everybody is complete. I put together here. Eh? Tithe for one another. Tithe for one another. And if any man hunger, let him do what? So if you come to church, that is a, a little cup we drink. It's, a, it's just little. It's the, your faith at work in it now. I want to get out here. Yes, uh, uh, if you want to do it in your own way, go and buy it drum. Take it to your house and begin to get it. Praise God, God's house. Or you go and carry it over, bake it, make it. Come people in the home, bake it, and you bake it in your house. Make it eat. But when you come here, it is a simple. The little. And then if anyone hunger in here, go to the next verse, please. Now, concerning spiritual gift, brethren, I will not have you was even a natural. Hallelujah. The Lord help in the name of Jesus. Amen. Take you to verse 33. Let me show you something. Verse 33. So, the question here is, has this been eradicated? Or not? It has not. So, communion is a doctrine. It's one of the doctrines that have been established. And how does this thing to be observed? It was, it was called the Lord's Supper. It must be at the evening. You don't take it in the morning. You don't take it at noon. And that is why you don't add the loss of trash. If it is not convenient for you, don't do it. You are not acting faith here. Whatever is a doctrine, that is a faith, but you don't change it. Don't do it on your own, then you say faith. Is, is somebody getting in here? So these are documents that are already intact. It was called the Lord's Supper. Right from the old altar, it was, it was done in the evening. And in the evening, Jesus came and it was observed. And after Jesus left, the disciples were doing it still in the evening. So they call it the Lord's Supper. Supper is a meal that you eat in the evening time. Praise the Lord Jesus. Breakfast is what you eat in the morning. Lunch is what you take in the afternoon. Supper is different. So don't take bring supper to morning. And don't bring supper to afternoon. Supper is supper. It is an ordinance. 